In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. The Gospel lesson that we heard today happens to fall this year on the Sunday, which precedes the first day of September in two days. The first of September, I think, is this coming Tuesday. And for the Holy Orthodox Church, September 1st is a very important date because September 1st is the date we celebrate and remember an event that changed Christianity forever. It was on September 1st in the year 312 AD that the Roman Emperor, his name was Constantine the Great, we know him as Saint Constantine, declared that Christians who were under persecution at that time were once and for all permitted to worship openly. And because of Saint Constantine's actions, the Christian Church was freed from discrimination and persecution from that day forward. And today for the Holy Orthodox Church, this day, September 1st, is considered to be, as Father George said, the beginning of the church calendar year for that reason. And as Father George mentioned, right after the sermon, we will read a prayer to commemorate this most holy and important day. Because it's, it's at this time of year when Christians throughout the entire world are given the opportunity to reflect on our lives over this past year, make any necessary adjustments that may be needed, and renew our commitment to our faith as we embark upon another church calendar year. And the gospel lesson that we heard a few minutes ago left us with an important message as we take the next couple of days to reflect over this past year and to reevaluate the state of our own spiritual well being and to prepare for the beginning of another new ecclesiastical new year. The gospel told us of a time in Judea when Jesus was approached by a wealthy young ruler, most likely a man of great influence and a man that held great power. And this young, influential, and powerful man asked Jesus a question. He said, good teacher, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered him by saying that you should follow the Ten Commandments. And he listed several of them for the man, if you remember. Then the Gospel says that the man told Jesus that he already does both believe in and practices the commandments in his own life. And so he asked Jesus, what do I still lack? Or in other words, what else must I do? And so Jesus, in what I think can be considered one of the most compassionate acts found in the New Testament, told that young, wealthy, and influential leader exactly what it was that he was lacking. Jesus said to him these words, If you indeed desire to be perfect, go and sell all your goods and give them to the poor, and then come and follow me. And he said, Then you will have treasure in heaven. But the gospel ends with the young man going away sad because it says he was a man of great wealth. And rather than hearing what Jesus was actually saying to him, that the one obstacle in his life that he needed to overcome was the reliance that he had on his wealth. Jesus, or the man, took what Jesus said as being judgmental, that Jesus was pointing out an imperfection in the man, a deficiency. And so he left Jesus 
and he was walking away sad and defeated at the end of the gospel. However, I think that the man in the gospel got it all wrong. The message that Jesus was sharing with him was not a judgmental uh, message or a message of his deficiency, and it was not a message against having great wealth, even. What the gospel was really teaching us, and to that man, is that as Christians, we are called to have a sense of humility. Why? Because ultimately, this gospel is not a gospel about the wealth of the young ruler, but the gospel is about the question that he asked. What's lacking in my life, he said, and what is it that's keeping me from inheriting eternal life? from inheriting the kingdom of heaven. And in the case of the young, wealthy ruler, what was lacking was a sense of humility. He was willing to ask the question of Jesus, but he was not willing to pay attention to the answer. He already had it figured out. Jesus was pointing out to this young ruler that it was his pride, and the attachment to his wealth that was obstructing his entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Pride and attachment, not the fact that he was wealthy. Wealth is not a sin. The attachment to wealth is where the danger lies. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel message is about what's needed in order for one to become Christ's disciples. What's needed to be a follower of Christ and what's needed to inherit eternal life, like the rich young ruler seemed to desire in his question. But unfortunately, he was not willing to pay the price. He was not willing to meet the terms that Jesus demanded. His need to be rich towards the world and his reliance upon his great wealth seemed to be more important to him than a need to be rich towards God and to be reliant upon him. And it's the latter, being rich towards God, that Jesus was addressing to the man in the gospel. And it's the latter, being rich towards God, that Jesus was proclaiming as the key to inheriting eternal life. Jesus answered the man's question, quite literally, but the man refused to respond. And what was it that Jesus asked him to do? He simply asked the man to take his possessions and to use them for the sake of others. But in the end, the man was unwilling to part with those possessions, and he found himself leaving without receiving what he came for. And so the challenge for all of us this week, as we begin another new church calendar year in two days, is to take a thoughtful inventory of our own spiritual lives and ask ourselves, what is it that may be lacking in my life? Where do my priorities lie? And are they making me rich towards God, or are they making me rich towards the world? Maybe like in the Gospel, it's putting the love of wealth over the love of God, or maybe it's putting the love of self over our love of God. Or maybe it's letting some other possession become more important to us than God, like our job, or our family, or our friends, or some worldly pleasure, or maybe sports, or maybe even food. It could be anything, 
And if we're not careful, an unhealthy attachment to any one of these things could be the one factor that stops us from inheriting God's eternal heavenly kingdom. So the gospel lesson is reminding us today at this time of year to ask ourselves, what are the possessions in my life that may be stopping me from putting God first? And what can I do today, starting now, to put these possessions towards the service of others, like Jesus asked the young ruler to do, so that my will may become free to fully become rich towards God, the same God whose will it is that all men should inherit eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.